Pre-cut fabrics are so fun to use sometimes. They're really convenient and especially charm packs. They are such a great price and then you get a whole line of fabric in them. And if you really love the line of fabric, that's so fun in a nice budget friendly way to be able to get all the prints you like because sometimes those fat quarter bundles are really expensive. But sometimes I do run out of ideas on how to use these and I often want to go to just a simple patchwork quilt, but that can get boring sometimes. So I'm going to share with you a fun way to use one charm pack and some accent yardage fabric to make a quilt that will look complicated, but I promise you will be really easy to put together. So let's get started. First, we're going to take this charm pack and lay it out in a six by seven design that we find really appealing. So let's open it up and start working on that. All right, so I'm gonna open up the charm pack and just lay it out. Sometimes you'll have a lot of the same prints right next to each other, or that'll be like laid out where it's a lot of the same colors together. So we'll want to kind of get a nice variety laid out. So like I said, I want a row that has six across. So like I'm not going to put all six of these same color together, right? I'm going to lay it out in a different way so that there's a nice variety. And isn't this fat, aren't these fabrics great? Oh my goodness. So six across and then we'll have seven blocks going down. You won't be able to see those all on screen, but I'll have seven going down. So see, I have a nice variety of colors here and I'm just going to get them all laid out in a way that I like. So see how when I'm laying out my charm pack, I just kind of lay it out as I pull them out of the stack. And then as I work and get more colors, then I will mix it up, right? So maybe up at the top, I still have a lot of red. So I'll put that blue up there and move my red down where I don't have any yet and just keep working through it. So now I'm getting some purples here. I have two oranges that are together. So I'll move an orange down so I get it lower in my in my stack of fabrics here. It's really a fun process. And I feel like sometimes I make it more complicated than I need to be by agonizing over where it goes and going really slow and laying them out very precise and carefully. So if I work faster and I feel like I don't pay too much attention and agonize over where they go, I kind of make the process a lot more fun that way. All right, so I got all of my squares laid out in a format that I liked. And then I started stacking the rows up on a design board and putting a marker on them. So I have four rows done and here is what it looks like on my design board. So I have row one and row two. And then on another design board, I have row three and four. So I'm gonna show you how I use my markers and stack my rows so that I can take it all over to the sewing machine and sew it really quickly. All right, so here I have row five, six, and seven. And here is one of my design boards. I just make these, they're super easy to make. And then my husband made me these markers that are really cool. They're acrylic and then they have numbers on them and letters. And they are gonna be available in our shop, but I love that they're on this ring and I can keep them all in order and easily put them back on and use them as needed and not have to go through a whole bag to find what I need. So what I do is I take my row and I stack the blocks in order. So I stop with, I start with the first one, put it on top and go in order. I do have a photo of this whole stacks or the whole layout so that I can refer back to it if I need to, if I think something got out of order. But here I just slide my number five off and then take a pin and pin it in place. So there's row five and then I'll just do the same with row six and row seven. 
So I love having marking tools. Now you don't have to buy a set of markers. You can use little scraps of paper and just write them on and pin them on. Uh, whatever works for your, you, of course. But my biggest issue with using these markers in the past is that I hated looking for them. <laughs> I would just have a like a bag full of them and you know like I, I felt like I spent too much time looking through the bag and trying to find the marker that I wanted. All right so here are all my stacks. I have one and two, three and four, and then five, six, and seven. So I just take these over the, to the sewing machine and sew them in order. So I find it really easy this way to just bring these all over to the sewing machine and sew and not have to walk back and forth to wherever my layout is. And then if I don't have time to sew these all right now, they're all stacked and organized and out of the way and not laid out somewhere in my way. All right, so I have my first stack here and I have this pin through the whole stack, but I'm going to take the pin out and just keep it pinned to the first square in the row. And then I like to move the stack that I'm working on because I know the row is starting from my left side and moving to the right. So I keep the stack that I'm pulling from on my right just to kind of make it a little more convenient. So I'm going to take the second block in the row lay it right sides together on the first, and then sew a quarter inch seam. Now there's a lot of debate on where you sew on these pinked edges. I just try to stay consistent. So if I decide to sew along the peak, I'll keep sewing along the peak on all of them. A good thing you could do, since these are supposed to be five inch squares, is measure the square and see where the measurement falls. Is it five inches at the kind of valley of the pinked edge or the mountaintop? <laughs> so I am going to actually sew along the valley just because it's easier for me to visually see and stay accurate there. But uh, just keep that in mind. Now this is the gonna be the top row for me. So I'm gonna back stitch there just because if I don't quilt this right away, it'll help hold everything together. And so I'm just going to sew a quarter inch seam there. And like I said, I chose to go at the valley here. And so I'm just going to try to stay consistent with all of my blocks so it matches up nicely. And I'm just going to keep sewing across here. I'm going to add the next one on. And like I said, because I have them over here, I don't mix it up and I actually try to put it on the wrong side since I have my marker pinned over there. That reminds me that it's the first block in the row. All right, so I have my first row sewn. So I'm just gonna set this to the side and get all the rest of my rows sewn together. And then I'll show you how to press them and bring all the rows together to complete the quilt top. Now, that won't be the finished quilt top. I'll be showing you the next steps we take after that. All right, so now that I have all of my strips sewn, I'm going to start pressing them. And I wanna press each row in a different direction. So typically what I do is I will start with my first row and I will press all the seams toward the first block, so toward the marker I have there. So I'm just gonna press all the seams going in that one direction. And this is so that we can nest the seams together so that they're each laying in a different direction. And then we won't have a lot of bulk where all the seams intersect. So I just get them going in the direction I want them to go. And then often I'll flip the block or the strip over and then press it again and kind of set it on it a little bit longer to get a little more heat on there. All right, so that's the first row. All right, and see how I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna put it on the other side of me this time. And then I'm going to press all the seams away from it. And I like to work this way just because 
it's easier for me to, since I'm right-handed, use my right hand and move across the seams in this direction. So I'm just getting them started going in the direction I want. And then I'll flip the block over so that it's on the correct side. All the markings are lined up correctly. And then I'm just going to press that seam. And I'll just keep alternating this way. So for row three, I'm going to press all the seams toward the first block in the row toward where the marker is. And I'll just alternate going down the whole uh, quilt top and get all the rows that way. All right, so what I'm going to do with these, and I'm going to press all the other rows, but let me just show you why pressing them this way works so well. So when I fold these right sides together, these seams are going in different directions. So one thing that's really helpful with that is that I can feel when they're lined up, so I'll get nice points there. And I can just put a pin in, and when I sew across this row, I'll get nice points and not a lot of bulk with the seams, if the, like I would if the seams were laying together. So I'm just going to put a pin in each of those kind of intersections. And then this row will be ready to sew. And you can see how fast this top will come together at this point. But like I said, keep watching because I'm going to show you something fun we can do to kind of make this quilt stand out from being just a simple charm pack, um, you know, patchwork type quilt. All right, so I'll take this over to the sewing machine and sew that quarter inch seam across there, and then I'll have row one and row two sewn together. And all right, so keep sewing all these rows together until you get the whole patchwork top completed, and then I'll show you how we're going to completely change it to make this quilt unique. All right, so how cute is this little top already? So cute. I mean, patchworks really are fun. I am being a little bit hard on them saying I get tired of making them, but there's just something about it when you have this fun mix of colors and patterns. So cute. But I'm going to move forward with showing you how to jazz this design up a little bit and make it look really complicated. You spent a lot of time piecing it, but you really didn't. All right, so what we're going to do is grab the yardage you have, we're going to press it, and then we're going to cut some one inch strips from it and 2.5 inch strips from it. All right, so now we're going to take the quilt and fold it in half. And we have the smaller side at the top here, and we're going to line up the fold down at the bottom, get it all nice and even. If you want to, you can line up the seams and put some pins in here to hold it in place really well. So just know the pins might get in your way, but make sure it's lined up. Make sure you have it nice and straight. And if it gets a little wonky, don't get upset. It'll be fine. We're just having fun here. So I'm going to put one more pin up here to keep this straight up here at the top because it keeps wanting to move down a little bit. All right, so once we get it straight, we're going to take our rulers and we're going to measure two and a quarter inches over from our seam. And we're going to measure that over all the way down the seam. And it's a little weird since we have the pin. And if you don't think you need the pin, don't use it. So that is bringing us to half, bring this block in half. So I'm going to line it up and then I'm going to cut across here. I'm going to cut there. And notice that I'm doing that cut on the second block in, okay? And I'm going to do that on this side as well two and a quarter inches. And if you want to mix it up, do the cut wherever you want. I mean, there really isn't any rules to quilting, I don't think. Have fun. Make all your quilts how you want them. 
I totally meant to put that cut, cut there if it's in the wrong spot, right? If you cut it wrong and it can still work out, it's I meant to do it. I meant to cut it a half an inch off. I meant to cut it uneven. I meant to. I just wanted it to look unique. <laughs> All right, so we have those two cuts made. And now what we're going to do is let's open these up so we can look at it better. All right, so now what we're going to do is on the, the, the piece in the middle here, we're going to sew one of our one inch strips to each side. And if you wanted to, you could have made these one and a half inch, you could make them two inch, make them whatever size you want. Now you may want to measure your quilt and cut these to size so they don't get all wonky. I'm gonna pin them in place to hold them and then I'll trim it down after. But you can totally measure and cut them to size because I know doing these long strips, it can get wonky um, and not stay nice and even. But I feel like I starched this fabric pretty well, so I'm gonna go with it instead of measuring it. But just keep in mind, you may want to um, you may want to measure your quilt and cut it to size. So I'm gonna put one on each side of here, and then that two and a half inch strip, I'm going to sew it on this side. So, and again, you could cut these to size if you feel like you need to, um, or you can trim them after. Just keep in mind that if you are sewing and not keeping this even, since it's longer than your your fabric here, your quilt top, it may it may go wonky. Just try to make sure you're not stretching anything. Try to keep it even. All right, and then we're putting a strip on this side as well. So we're gonna go over to the sewing machine, sew a quarter inch seam along all of these strips. And then I'll show you what we do after that. You will wanna press them as well. I'm gonna press all of my seams to the strip that I'm sewing on. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you would rather press it the other way, I don't think it'll make much of a difference here. Just know that I'm choosing to press all of these toward the strip. All right, so now that we have our strips sewn in place, what we're going to do is take the end strips here and turn them so that we kind of have a border on the end. So this wider strip is the border, and then we're gonna have an accent here. So we're gonna turn the end on both sides. All right, and if you don't like how these line up, you can always move this strip to the other side and see if you like the layout better. You don't have to keep it where you're turning the one on the same side, if that makes sense. So we're just gonna put this right sides together, add some pins and sew it in place, and then do the same thing on the other side. We're going to lay it right sides together, add some pins, sew it in place, and we'll press those seams toward the strips again. So after we get this sewn and pressed, we still have one more step we're going to do. So after getting these sewn in place and pressed, I'm still gonna have a few more things that I wanna show you to kind of jazz this quilt up. All right, so how cute is this looking with everything sewed in place? And now you have these different size blocks to make everything interesting with little accent strips. Love it already, but we're gonna do the same thing now in the other direction. And lining up these seams is going to be a little trickier since we have these slits in. So keep that in mind. What I'm going to do is along this side here, I'm gonna line up the seams and put a pin in. And then the same thing on the other side. Kind of make sure it's all straight and even. All right, and then you can feel through here and feel that the seams are lined up get a pin in those. All right, and then I'm gonna line up the fold 
on a line here. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cut the second block in in half. So I have all these seams here now that I can line up on to make sure I'm straight, which is nice. I'm going to take that pin out since I don't think I've shifted any of this. So I have it two and a quarter lined up. I'm going to line up my ruler and cut. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to leave that in play, that pin in place because I'm not cutting across this ruler. I'm just using it for measurements. And I'm going to line up at two and a quarter again and cut. Take the pins out and fold this out to take a look at it. All right, and so again, I'm going to take the one inch strips and sew them along this inner block here. And then my wider strips and sew them along the end strips. So I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam, then press to the strips again. I'm going to trim them down if needed and do the same thing I did before. I'm going to turn these outside strips around and sew them in place to this bigger centerpiece. So I'm going to have these nice accents going through the middle and I'm going to have this quilt bordered. All right, so here's the quilt all finished. And it's about 31 by 35 inches. Now, we already have this inner border on it, so it'd be really easy if you wanted to make this quilt bigger to add a, another border around that is wider, or if you have the same fabric in charm pack as well, you could add some squares around the border or cut these in half and do a piano key border around it to add a little more fun and interest to the quilt as well. So you could definitely make this bigger. Plus, if you do have two charm packs, you could put them together and make this quilt bigger from the start and put more accent strips to it and just make it your own that way. Definitely a quilt idea that you could have a lot of fun with and make it your own. So let me know in the comments if you plan to make one of these quilts, if you plan to make it bigger from the start or what type of border you plan to add to it. I would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.